You may remember that's how we've been following up on Easter, taking a few weeks to think about how Easter changes everything and how we can be made new. And we took a break from our series for the outdoor indoor worship service, but I want us to return now to uh, thinking together about being made new and how Easter changes everything. The first week of the series, we learned that it's our faith in Christ that transforms us into the people that God wants us to be. The second week, we discovered that because of the grace of God, we can move past our past. Our sins and mistakes don't have the last word or the final say, but Jesus does. This week, we're going to take a look at another part of the far-reaching effects of the resurrection. When God makes us new, we become part of his family. I want us to think together about God's family this morning. We're going to be in John chapter 1. If you have your copy of scripture with you, I invite your attention to John chapter 1. We're going to begin at verse 9. If you use the Bible app, certainly invite, encourage you to do that as well. You can also find an event in the menu of the Bible app. That event represents what's happening right here. And so if you find that event in the menu of the Bible app, you can follow along with the message as well. We're in John chapter 1, and we're going to begin at verse 9. As we think together about what it means that we get to be part of God's family. That's possible because of the resurrection in this way. The Bible teaches that God created man to have fellowship with him, and man chose to go opposite of what God wanted. Man chose sin. When man chose sin, this chasm came between man and God. Sin always separates man from God. So when we sinned, we were separated from him. The Bible says that that separation is so vast that we are enemies of God. The, the King James version, version says that we are at enmity with him. We're separated so far that we are enemies of God. Well, Jesus came to die on the cross in order to pay the penalty for our sin and to close that gap, to be a bridge in that chasm between man and God. Because of what he did on Calvary by dying and paying the penalty for sin, when we trust in him, we receive his grace. Now we can be friends with God again. And if that was all there was to the story, that would be amazing grace, worthy of eternal praise. But there's more to the story than just that. Because not only did his sacrifice on the cross enable us to be forgiven of sin and to be friends with God again, but by his resurrection power, when we trust in him, we are actually made new creatures. We become new beings. And these new beings, these new creatures in Christ are adopted into God's family. So because of our sin, we separated ourselves from him and became God's enemy. Jesus died on the cross that we might be reunited with God, reconciled with him and be friends with him again. But because of their amazing love and grace for us, now we not only are friends with God, but we can be adopted and become God's sons and daughters to live in his family for all eternity. That is amazing grace indeed. Look with me, John chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. You notice this is the first chapter of John, so he is telling the story of how Jesus is going to come. Jesus uh, he, he is represented in this first chapter as the light of the world. And so John is referring to Jesus when he says the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Now, that's an amazing statement. The creator entered the creation. The world was made by him, and now he is in the world. The last part of verse 10, the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. You see, they had been so separated from God. We had been so separated from God that they did not even recognize the light when the light appeared. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Jesus was born into a Jewish family. He was raised a Jewish boy. He went through the the ceremony at, at, at day eight. He went through the ceremony at age 12. He was a Jewish boy. He came to his own Jewish families, and yet they rejected him. He was one of us, and as humans, we rejected him. Even more than that, he came to his Jewish people, and even they rejected him. They did not receive him. Verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Not just Christians who are part of a major world religion, but children of God. He did not just come to get something started. And we're not just a part of a movement. Jesus came to bring new life to walking dead people. Spiritually speaking, we were not alive until he brought us new life. Spiritually speaking, he awakened the soul within, brought us to life, and when he did that, he enables us now to be adopted into God's family. Not just part of a religion, but part of an everlasting family of God. Verse 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In other words, you didn't do anything to put yourself in a position to be saved. You didn't do anything to become a Christian. God did it for you. Jesus paid the price on the, cow, on the cross. Then God the Father came to you and said, I adopt you, and God the Holy Spirit woke you up spiritually within and said, now you can believe. You could not have even trusted in Jesus had it not been for the work of God. It is by grace that we are saved, not by works. You couldn't have done it. But if you have trusted in Christ, If you believe in Jesus Christ and you've given him your life, then friend, you're not just hanging on hoping for heaven someday. You're a child of God. You're adopted into the family. And you get to trust in him every day. You get to live in that family for all eternity. You see, with new life comes a new family. With new life comes a new family. When the Holy Spirit awakened you, enabled you to believe in Jesus Christ, then you were adopted into God's family. And there are some incredible benefits that come to us by being in the family of God. Those benefits are put on display in the early church in the book of Acts. We got to see some of the benefits of being in God's family. Look with me in, in uh, Acts chapter 2. We're going to to discover that church life is family life. Church life is family life. Look at some of the benefits that we find of being in the church family, God's family. Acts chapter 2, beginning at 42. Acts 2 at 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship the breaking of bread, and prayers. The early church devoted themselves to these things. The biblical teaching of the apostles. 
The fellowship, the koinonia is the word, and that means the sharing of life together. There is more than just a gathering in a room on Sunday at 1015. In a church family, there's the sharing of life together. We are brothers and sisters. We live life among each other. He says they, were, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, which might, might be talking about the Lord's Supper, although I, I'm not sure here. It might also just be breaking bread together. They were at each other's homes. They, they were at the Lubies after church. They were breaking bread together. There's something about gathering at the table with family. And it is at the table that we, that we let down our walls and we begin to communicate in, on deeper levels and we share life in a meaningful way. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, which may be the Lord's Supper, it may also be sitting to table together and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. You see that? As a family, God was doing something in their lives. He was bringing brothers and sisters. He was adopting them into the same family. And together they had all things in common. In just a moment, we're going to gather at the Lord's table. We, we call it communion that word communion is a powerful word if you if you listen to it it's it you can hear the root in other important words communion you hear communicate you hear community they had all things in common all of those words are related it means that at the table we are one family here it says, as God adopted this one and that one and put them in family life together, that they had all things in common. Verse 45, they were selling their possessions and belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. They took care of one another. Day by day, attending the temple. Now, did you notice that? They came to church every day. Every day, we got it easy. Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. As more people got saved, they got adopted into the family and Church life is family life. And as we think about those things headed toward the table, we see that new life, with new life comes a new family. That church life is family life. And then I want to show you the father's family trait. As the father adopts kids who trust in Jesus, we become, we become brothers and sisters. Jesus is our elder brother, the firstborn. Now we are joint heirs with him, brothers and sisters. What ties us together? What is that family trait that lets the world know that we're part of this family? 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. So we are. What makes it possible? What is the motivating factor in God calling us to his family? It is his love for us. That then becomes a family trait. And Jesus tells his disciples, the world is going to know that you're mine when you have love 
one for another, when they see the family trait in you. And so Jesus says, as I have loved you, now you go and love others. Show them the family trait. The family is based on the Father's love. And so we come to the table this morning in communion. Community in union. We come to the table as one family. When my parents bought the house that I grew up in, there was this great big dining room table. And the people who sold the house didn't want to have to move that great big dining room table, so they sold the table with the house. And so I grew up with this massive table. And in the middle of this massive table, there were three planks of wood. We called them leaves. You familiar with the leaves of a table? We could undo that latch underneath it, kind of pull it out a little bit. We could take those leaves out, hide them in a closet, close the table up, and now it was a table for four or six. We had guests come over, you pull that thing out, you take the leaves out of the closet, you put them in there, and you got this big massive table. 90% of the time, the leaves stayed in the table. Not for any particular reason other than we were too lazy to mess with moving the leaves back and forth. But the leaves had room for others to sit at the table. Friends, I want to encourage you to make sure you leave the leaves in the table. We must always have room, make room for others at the table. Because God brought us into his family in love. The family trait is love. As we love our neighbors, as Christ loved us, we will invite them to the family. Tell them, you need to come know my Father. You need, to, you need to trust in Jesus that you might be adopted into the family and we can welcome them to the table. Leave the leaves in the table so there's room for growth in the kingdom. Father, thank you for letting us be a part of your family. Forgive us for those times that we forget we're brothers and sisters. Lord, forgive us for those times that our selfishness causes problems in the family. And today as we gather around your table again, we pray that you would bring healing, restoration to relationships, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us as your family, brothers and sisters adopted by your grace. Lord, we pray that this morning you'd help us remember who made that possible and what he did to bring us to that place in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Deacons, would you join me at the Lord's table?